I'm James Martineau, and I was lucky enough to be the director for Of Dice and Men by Cameron McNary. Hi, it's Mary Kate here. Um, I play Tara in Of Dice and Men. Hi, fam. My name is Allie, and I was the stage manager for Other World Theater Company's production of Of Dice and Men. And I'm here to talk to you a little bit about safety in the time of coronavirus. In terms of how we decided to go about the production is I think we were a bit naive in thinking that uh, everything might uh, resolve itself a bit quicker than it has. And, you know, we started working on this project thinking, hey, we'll do this show, we'll revamp the show once the theater is able to reopen and things are kind of getting back to normal. It was with the intention to eventually produce a fully realized actual stage show uh, for the summer of 2020. <laughs> Sweet summer children we were. Uh, so eventually we came to the conclusion that it just would not be uh, the responsible choice for us to present this to a live audience. Um, I believe now that the, the guidelines allow gatherings of like up to 50 people, but seeing what was happening in our country and abroad, we just didn't think that it was um, a smart move to have that many people in one place. We also had a few surveys go out uh, to the cast throughout the process to ensure that they actually felt safe when we finally got back together. We consulted with everyone privately uh, and anonymously uh, to ascertain their level of comfortability in terms of where do we go from here. At the end of the day, you know, our voices were really heard. There were so many anonymous survey monkeys that went around kind of gauging our comfort level, gauging how we felt about things and you know what we wanted um, as performers for next steps and where we wanted the show to go and when we wanted to record it and how we wanted that done. I did feel at any point in the process that if I said, I don't want this or I feel uncomfortable, I would have been heard and respected. And so much of that comes down to Otherworld, it comes down to Ali, it comes down to James. It was a unanimous and anonymous decision for us to meet in person and reduce our run to one day of filming that we could then present in a digital format um, for Otherworld. I think it was definitely the right thing to do to perform it without an audience and offer it as a digital play. Now, important to note, in order for us to move forward and do it this way and give you the recording that you're going to see tonight, which I am so excited to watch, that had to be a unanimous decision between myself, the, the rest of the team, and the cast. Everybody had to be in agreement. And if we all weren't unanimously in agreement, then you wouldn't be seeing the show in the form that you are seeing it tonight. And... Um, it just ended up being a really rewarding experience that I'm, I'm very proud that we were able to do what we did with it. Which brings us to the nitty gritty, why you came. Here's what we did. I wanted to take some time to talk to you about our rehearsal process for the show. Um, it was very unique in that it was entirely virtual. When we started rehearsing this virtually back in April, uh, we all understood that we wouldn't be able to get together, uh, be in the theater, have props or costumes or lights or sounds all the way up until tech week. We didn't see each other until a few days before we did the recording, which was almost all one take and kind of cut up into a series of scenes. We met in person the first time to do a costume fitting. This was a very quick endeavor in and out. I want to say the whole thing took maybe 45 minutes. Everybody was masked for the duration of this particular uh, meeting at the theater. Uh, for the entire time that we were there. The second time that we all got together was a cue to cue. Now, part of the strategy that we had in order to reduce our amount of time that we were all gonna spend together, um, we had our two designers come in and build their cues uh, in the weeks leading up to the filming of the show. So that when we got ready to film and got ready to tech, the only thing that we would have to do is add the actors and just do one cue to cue, sort of a final dress rehearsal, make sure all of our technical elements were working to uh, the liking of our two designers, and then move forward from there. We teched, sort of, but it was really a cue to cue because, you know, management didn't want us in this space longer than we needed to be there. So a lot of the scenes, when we performed it, that's that's us performing it. That's two months of, of virtual rehearsal culminating in like an explosion of 
let's see if we can do this. Like, let's see if this works. Cue to Cue was a relatively quick affair as well. It only, I wanna say it took us maybe an hour and a half, maybe two hours, because we did have a little stop and go. I'm also incredibly thankful for our cast and crew. They were so flexible and optimistic and willing to follow our stringent procedures regarding their safety. Uh, I do want to interject here that in addition to keeping people on track with their breaks and making sure we were on schedule with those, um, I was also monitoring our sanitization levels, meaning that everybody had to use hand sanitizer approximately once every 30 minutes and everybody had to wash their hands with soap and water once an hour. Everything that they touched as well, any props, any set pieces that they had to move, anything that the actors had to touch was also sanitized in addition to the boards that the designers were using to do their jobs. We made sure everyone sanitized everyone and everything frequently. We all wore masks. Um, but it was great, you know, uh, James Martineau, our director, did a fantastic job of making us all feel safe and comfortable throughout the entire process. Uh, Ali, our uh, stage manager, was exceptional. Chef's kiss, so good. She constantly checked in with us, made sure that we were sanitizing our hands, uh, wearing our masks when we weren't doing our final performance, making sure that we were washing our hands regularly. Uh, she was exceptional. I think it's hard to be a stage manager, and it must be even harder to be one in this type of uh, challenging environment. Filming day. I want to pause here to let you know that I am a person that is very anxious about coronavirus. I am a person who is adamant about wearing masks. Um, I am a person who feels the anxiety of this. So when I tell you that I had people's best interests and their safety 1000% in mind, know that I'm also including myself in that because these are scary times. It took a total of six hours altogether to film the entire show. People were only together in that room unmasked for no more than 10 minutes at a time. Again, we had the entire theater to spread ourselves out in. Uh, and those of us who were behind the scenes, myself, Mike, Sarah, and James were all masked for the entire duration of the day. So with that said, on our filming day, we met for a total duration of six hours to film the show. The only members of the team who were allowed to be unmasked at any time were the actors and only when they were on stage performing for the camera. It's not the same as a live production, but there is something really special about never being together until it's time to like do it. I am happy to report that it has been almost a month, a little, about a month since we filmed and we have had zero infection. Since then, Other World has put even more procedures into place. This includes checking temperatures at the door, self-certifications of health, and multiple contact tracing systems have been put into place. Now I understand that other, other companies are maybe considering what they can do at this time. So my hope with this video is to let you know what we did and how we were able to move forward in a way that we felt safe doing so. Everything is a risk. Um, we wanted to make sure that we were mitigating that risk so that it was very, very low when we were meeting together. It's so great that we're still able to create and share art during these crazy times. So if you're a creator out there watching this, I hope that you found this comforting. It's still possible to do what we love to do as long as we put safety at the top of our priorities. And again, I cannot thank our cast and crew enough for all of their hard work. All of that said, if you are considering doing this for uh, your own theater or your own, maybe you're a part of something that's considering doing this, my biggest advice to you is to keep those channels of communication open. Make sure everyone who is involved in your production feels comfortable and safe enough to speak out. If I left anything out, if I forgot to mention something, if you think of something, a question for me, feel free to um, shoot me a message. I'm on Facebook. My last name is Kern, K-E-I-R-N. I'm on Instagram as Tiny Funny Ginger. Come find me there. Shoot me a DM. I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. That was a lot. Thank you for watching all of that. Thank you for caring about the health of our actors, of actors in Chicago and actors 
in the world right now. And I hope I could provide some insight for you all. So I really hope that you enjoyed the show. I hope that you get a good laugh out of it and maybe a tear or two. And I guess I also hope that someday maybe we'll get to come together and perform it in earnest for an audience and uh, enjoy that eclect I was gonna say eclectic, that electric audience actor relationship and journey and experience. <laughs>